not married with your wife yet, but you want to get married. But you said if you commit adultery, can you remarry? That's just the question. I'm just saying this so I can understand your question. So can you remarry or can she remarry? Can she remarry? Give me that in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. So, being that you committed adultery, first of all, you can't remarry. You committed adultery. <laughs> but we're going to read about the woman. If the woman commits adultery, can she remarry? Because remember what I said about the woman. She's special, right? God feels something. He puts y'all high. Y'all feel special. He don't just want y'all acting any type of way. He don't just want y'all with all these different men. Y'all are special. Remember that. This is how special God see y'all. Read that. Verse 20. The wife is bound by law as long as her husband liveth. So the scripture said the wife is bound by law as long as her husband lives. Read. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to marry to to be married to whom she will. So, the only way she can re remarry is if you die. So, once you marry a man, is no divorce. God don't play with divorce. Once you get with a man, you stand with that man until he dies. Yes, Lord. And that's because God look at you so special, he don't want to ever be a time on this planet where that could be your wife and I'm looking like, hey, she used to be mine. God don't ever want it to be a time where two men to have a woman at once. Who was the first two people on the planet? Adam and Eve. And who, what did Eve do? She, she, they say bitter apple, it wasn't apple. But she committed sin, man committed sin. That looks at the man different than the woman. He got two separate laws for the man and woman. If the woman committed adultery, the man got to put her away. But if the man committed adultery, Divorce her. Now she committed adultery. She didn't even do nothing to begin with. And that's just because God looked at the woman special. We got yeah. God feel about our women. We are special people and we got to come back to know who we are. There shall be no whores. We say hoes today. But the Bible says whores. Woman, a woman that sleeps with different men. And it's also talking about men that's whore murders. Sleeping with different women. Read that from top again. Read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, and verse 4. Yeah. Marriage is honorable in all. So God said marriage is honorable. So you said, right now you're not married, right? But you plan on getting married, right? Because that's the law. So what about you, sis? Are you married? No? Well, let's read that again. Y'all brothers married? Y'all brothers dealing with any women, boyfriend, girlfriends? Any of y'all? You got a few? Read that from the top. <laughs> Man, hey, at least you're honest, brother. We all here to teach you something. A lot of our people just like that. Read the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. God said marriage is honorable. He did not say boyfriends and girlfriends. He did not say being a player, having a bunch of women. Right. Because you having a bunch of women, you causing all women to be whores. Right. Because you having a bunch of women, you causing all women to be whores. That's right. He did not say being a player, having a bunch of women. Right. Because you having a bunch of women, you causing all women to be whores. That's right. And we got to see them as sisters. We got to see them as sisters. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Rucha Ha Kwadash, and double honors to the elder apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors also to you, brother, brethren. Uh, you followers of the truth and shalom to the elect. Anyway, okay, I've been having this thing with IUIC from the long hair for the different doctrines, the way they teach. They even went into saying Apostle Paul when he spoke about the long hair that was talking about an effeminate look not having anything to do with Men with long hair all the way down their back with braids, you know, see how they flip it and make it what they want. <clears throat> but then they, they'll they uphold, claim to uphold in the law, but they'll rock their long hair. <clears throat> but even in the law, there's nothing against having different women, right? But then they'll go into the bishop must be blameless and have one wife. And we'll get that, even a commentary on that. But first, I want to go into the fact that this man said, um, having a bunch of women causes them to be, you know, to go off, to be whores. That's what he says. When I don't know how that's the case, if they're in order, 
how's that? Not having men, right, in order <clears throat> can cause that if they're not in order. What about all the women and if so few men? Now what? <laughs> so now that's how you're causing them to go off because everything is out of course. Now, according to the Bible, <clears throat> there's no law, right? In fact, the scripture says be fruitful and multiply, but there's nothing saying that you're not supposed to have many wives or is. And uh, we, we don't, you know, I agree that in a society, it's not a good idea to get, try to get a bunch of wives and concubines, but there's no law against that. Where'd he get that from? You know what it is. It's the pleasing of the queen of heaven spirit. That's what these guys got on him. He went to um, tell this these women that they're more special than he even acknowledged men. Now, here's a bunch of men up here reaching out to these women, telling them how special they are. Now, the whole house of Israel, well, let me say starting with the elect, is special. Starting with the men, then the women, as the perfect order that, 1 Corinthians 11 is set up with but no not these guys they just reach out to the woman and that's where that one wife thing comes into play when really <clears throat> the average woman even knows that they don't mind messing with a man that has women even in the world they would fight against it they don't agree with it but they'll be the main ones that mess with men that have other women I'm not doing a video to knock women or, you know, just talk bad about women, but that's just what it is, right? And there's women who understand that. There's nothing wrong with having more than one wife. But then these same guys teach that in first, uh, Isaiah 4, I think, uh, fourth chapter when it says uh, seven women shall take hold of one man, they teach that that's going to happen, and then you can do it. That 501c3 is a B. Anyway, let's go to 2 Corinthians 11 and 18. Then Rohabon took him Malahath. Now, was this wicked? The daughter of Jeremoth, the son of David, to wife, and Aphriel, the daughter of Eliab, the son of Jesse, which bare him children. Jeshua, uh, Shem Shemaria, Shamaria, Zaham, and after her took Ma'akah, the daughter of Absalom, and uh, bare him Abijah, and Azizah, and Ziza, and Shelamoth, Shelamith. And Rohabom loved Ma'akah, right, the daughter of Absalom, above all his wives and concubines, for he took. 18 wives, three score concubines, and beget 20 and eight sons. So the man's seed produces cells, right? That are uh, spermia, right? That can, you know, fertilize an egg. A woman has an egg once a month. She, um, she goes through her menstruals, and there is not even a biological clock on a man, right? So. The woman comes on a minstrel, according to the law, she's not supposed to be there or whatever. Pure, you know, there's a purification process. So what is the man supposed to do? Right? <laughs> what do these guys say about that? But this is what they teach, man. That's these guys, man. And I and I believe it's all about the woman. You know? That's what it is. It's all about that woman. They're, they're appeasing the woman. And that's the best way I can say it. Okay? Gideon's. What about going to the time of Gideon? Gideon's death. Later, Gideon's son of Joash died at ripe old age and was buried in the tomb of his father Joash and Ophrah and Abiezites. Abiez and soon, and as soon as Gideon was dead, well, let me go on first up. Um, let me just go to 30. Gideon w had 70 sons of his own since he had many wives. His concubines 
who dwelt, uh, dwelt in Shechem also bore him a son and his name uh, was Abimelech which we read this story with Abimelech you know going off and finally the Lord put him to death you know and he, he and the Lord still showed him mercy to a degree because he the woman dropped something on his head and he asked the man to kill him because he said he wouldn't want to be killed by a woman right but that's the, the part of the story but I just wanted to go in here how did we procreate what about the, tw the 12 tribes of Israel man that was our heritage if we wanted to see at that time it wasn't a big deal to say yeah I got five wives it wasn't some lustful adventure it was just a thing that we had it wasn't no big super issue because you could you know I mean it was a good thing you know you had power to do that just like today if you can afford a big house well you get a big house you know everything is just out of order but these guys are nothing but Christian boys and fringes man that's their doctrine let's go to Timothy let's go to Timothy um, uh, we know what the scripture says 1 Timothy 3 and, three and 2 um, let the husband be blameless and a bishop having a bishop be blameless and having one wife, right? So I'm gonna read a little bit of this commentary. Um it says for the importance of the primary qualification to see note in Timothy five and seven, the husband of one wife, this also what the ordinance were to be um before they were appointed presbyters, uh, you know, hierarchy. Hence, husbands of one wife refers to the prevalent polygamy and has nothing to do with prohibition of a second marriage after ordination. So when they were ordained, this proves that it wasn't technically about being one wife because you can already had, if you had already three wives, you were ordained, you still had to take care of that wife. And I'm going to go into why he said the husband of one wife. It says, we see here as t uh, um, elsewhere in a pastoral epistles of Timothy 3 and 2, which we'll get a solemn demand for purity and blameless blamelessness in marriage relationships and widespread concubinage and license. Now, the reason why we're going to get in that because you had to know what was going on at that time. This is why Paul was so controversial. There was things that he did. He used guile. There's things that he said, you know, for the manner of the church. Because we were a lost people. Right? So this is why he was talking about the law. Because people was kept talking about, you know, people didn't have the faith. They were just using the law as a formal thing for power and just to say hey they're in the truth so to speak these guys it's all about the law there's nothing else dealing with the faith right so anyway it says I'm going to just get to the point of this one um, it's a lot in here so I'm going to just try to read what I can because when you go into it yeah, I'm going to just read to the part before I say what I say so you can get the point. Okay, we're going to shoot over here to the Cambridge commentary, 1 Timothy 3 and 2. I'm going to just get to the point. It says, um, let me see here. Many converts to Christianity would have more than one wife. They were nowhere commanded to put away all but one. So how was they ordained to be these bishops and presbyters if it said a bishop must be blameless and have one wife? And that was, if that was the case, they would never be set up to do so. So this proves that, I'll get to the point, but it was not seemly that a man in such position should be a Christian minister who ought in all re, uh, respects to be an example to the flock 
<clears throat> okay, it says, uh, no cause, no difficulty, then as now many women would change her partner and with or without a so-called remarriage, right, feel no scruple. This is why he said a bishop must be blameless and have one wife because the women were changing their partners and if he would try to, if he would marry these different women, he they would be, in a sense, they're the head of the church it would be form of an adultery. They would be committed. He would be committing adultery because he's messed with other men's wives. Remember, the only time a wife is loosed from a marriage is through her husband's death. You know, and if she was put away, then she not to remarry. Let's read that again. Um, a woman would change her partner and with or without any so-called without a so-called remarriage feel no scruple so long as she was faithful to the new partner the elementary principle of Christian relationships needed then to be taught to Christian Asia and needs teaching now and, and many still have heathen circles of Christian England so, you know, anyway, that's to the point. There's nothing against having, you're not committing adultery if you're a man and you have a, a different woman. And so as long as she doesn't belong to anyone else, right? So as long as she doesn't belong to anyone else. Now, we all know everything is messed up. Nobody knows what's what and what's going on. And this is why we push you know in a sense it's it's not good to mess with these women and try to and, and more so try to have more than one wife we, we're in a disagreement with if a brother want to have one wife which we feel would be better and if what's best is not to have one at all so you won't be distracted if there's a distraction it's a spiritual thing but there's nothing in the law that say you can't have wives or concubines man you got to throw out the, uh, me and the brother was talking today you got to throw out the western culture to understand this book man that's all i have on that shallow one